For more on short selling and its impact on the markets, I'm joined by Craig James. He's a managing partner at Precision Advisors. Craig, good to see you. Good to see you, Michelle. Craig, the basic premise of investing is buy low, sell high. But you can make a lot more money if you short something successfully. Very basically, explain what it means to short a stock. Well, shorting securities is similar to buying securities, except it's in reverse. So the best way to think of it is, in the same way that you can buy a stock and hope it goes higher, you can sell a stock and hope it goes lower. So for instance, you could sell a stock at 100 uh, in the hopes of that it falls to 80 and buy that back and pocket the difference. Uh, the best way to think about it, maybe the greatest analogy I can give you is Manhattan real estate. Uh, with a million dollar apartment, you might be more apt to sell that apartment than buy it. If there was a mechanism by which you could sell the apartment, let the market correct and then buy it back at a lower price, that's essentially what shorting is. Presuming, of course, that you believe that whatever the underlying asset is, is going to lose value. But what if it doesn't? What if you buy something and it does not lose value, in fact, it increases in value? Well, that's the, <clears throat> therein lies the rub, right? Um, the problem with shorting stocks, or I should say the risk, is asymmetric. And what I mean by that is, in other words, if you sell a stock, it's bound by zero to the downside. So you can at most make 100%. Conversely, if a stock got taken out for two times its current price, you stand to lose much more than 100%. So that asymmetric function, you're always on the wrong side of. Timing is everything, particularly when shorting a security, given that there's a certain period of time by which you have to pay back the money that you use to borrow said stock. Explain that to us. Well, I think what you're getting at is the risk of a being bought, at, bought in. So when you're short of security, if there is uh, the lender of the security may have to, may want his shares back. So you are, in essence, selling something that you don't own. The owner of that security could buy, buy you back in. In that situation, short squeezes can happen. Uh, and that is a danger with shorting uh, the market and shorting stocks in general. And then with the short squeeze, of course, the price skyrockets because everybody's trying to cover that position. Correct. Uh, it's usually a violent squeeze higher. Let's, uh, let's take oil, for example. Had you had the foresight a year ago to see that oil prices would be down about 40%, how would you be able to exercise that? What would be the strategy in playing that? Well, there's a number of ways you could uh, express a short position in oil. Uh, you could buy puts on the commodity itself. Uh, you could have shorted the integrated uh, or the oil service companies like Halliburton and Schlumberger. Uh, you could have played it through uh, emerging markets like Brazil that have a heavy dependency on, the, on crude for their local economy. So there's a number of ways to play crude. I mean, at one point, $60 looked like a bargain uh, when in July it was 120. Now we're at sub 30. So these are situations that. Uh, Quite frankly, with all the geopolitical influences with oil, it's a very difficult Let, call to make. Let's simplify this even further. Say, for example, I think that um, Exxon stock is going down because I can see that oil prices are going down generally across the board. And so I'm pretty sure that Exxon is not going to be profitable. Mm -hmm. What would I do? Well, it, it, again, it's dependent on ultimately your timing of the shorts and, and what your view is in terms of the absolute downside that you, you would expect to see in Exxon. Uh, the best uh, short, in my opinion, is to buy slightly out of the money puts in a name. A put uh, is the right to sell. A put is the right to sell the security, not the obligation, but the right to sell the security within a defined uh, framework uh, or time framework. So buying puts is the option to sell. Well, let's look at the market at large here sure. because um, it has been, well, pretty dismal. The U.S. Uh, average is down 7.8 percent. Asia markets are down about 12 to 15 percent. Do you foresee this trend continuing? Well, it certainly got choppy in a hurry. I mean, the market assumed the fetal position uh, in the space of one month. Uh, you woke up of January 1, and uh, it's been nothing but red for the most part, uh, save for last week where we had a modest recovery. Uh, I think volatility, it will in the short term continue to manifest itself both in developed markets and in emerging markets. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, U.S. markets are down anywhere from 7 to 9%. In Asia, uh, we're looking more like 11 to 15%. Volatility, uh, three-month implied volatility measurements are in their 99th percentile over the last 12 months. 
you have H here at 30, you have uh, HSI at uh, 28. So we're talking about uh, fairly elevated volatility. Uh, we expect that cont to continue in the short term, particularly as people try to make sense of Fed posturing, uh, obviously the price of oil, a major consideration. So a lot of cross currents here that should manifest itself in higher vol. Well, you mentioned the Asian market, the Shanghai Composite, one market that's been exceptionally volatile. And in order to instill some kind of calm, uh, regulators there put restrictions on short selling. Mm -hmm. How exactly did that work, and, and is that a good idea? Well, anytime regulators get involved in the market dynamics of fair and efficient markets, it ends badly, in my opinion. So uh, in, in the short term, it may control some of the exasperated selling that occurs, but long term, that mechanism, not allowing investors to freely buy and sell securities at will, uh, creates these liquidity gaps and ultimately more volatile markets. Craig, very quickly, are there any sectors at large that you think should be shorted at the moment? Well, I, I'm never a big proponent for shorting markets down 10% after a sloppy tape uh, over a course of a month uh, because there's always that clear and present danger of a snapback rally, a dead cat bounce, if you will. That said, uh, companies that have a lot of leverage on their balance sheets, uh, the market right now is in current punish mode on those type of uh, payoff profiles. So I would look at industrials mm -hmm. uh, that are hev heavy leveraged, uh, net debt to EBITDA levels that are uh, extended. Those are the kind of uh, profiles that I would look to short. Right, and of course, uh, with a commodity slump, industrials would be a good call as well. All right, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much, Craig James, Managing Partner at Decision Advisors.